America today is perceived to have the fastest growing economies in the world. This means that businesses from all over the world are now more than ever before ready to do business on the continent. This year, I was in Cologne, Germany, to attend the Africa Finance and Investment Forum, also known as AFIF. The forum is a platform for African enterprises seeking both financial and business knowledge. Not only did I attend as a moderator, I had a chance to ask key questions about the conference. The aim of the conference was to bring together banks across Europe and indeed the world to create a significant roadmap for the growth of the business sector in Africa through provision of access to finance. However, companies now want to do more than finance their partners. We believe that the strongest partnerships are in fact family to family. We love partnering on the one hand some of the world's leading families with on the other hand families that have built great companies. Mm -hmm. uh, to the extent there might be attendees here today representing companies that have been built by families or advisors or partners to those families that want to partner with some of the world's leading families to grow their business to the next level and to transformative companies for great returns, great impact, job creation, doing it the right way, doing what Africa is capable of. Africa, pundits say, will only be transformed if the people themselves take their own initiative. But many are positive that the new generation with their education and creativity will develop the continent so that it will have its weight of influence. Rather than handouts, investors are coming up with new ways to provide knowledge transfer through training and development partnerships. Brazil has become a very important provider of uh, engineering services for infrastructure. Uh, for instance, our, our knowledge of the uh, technical issues involved with uh, hydroelectrical power plants and, and dams uh, is, is one that is well known worldwide. So basically what, what we try to find out is where the experience that the Brazilians have acquired over the years as a developing country in facing up to our uh, own challenges in developing our industry, developing agriculture, where is this experience relevant to potential African partners? We have a special attention for the SMEs. And in order to reach these SMEs, we have different approaches. We have one approach, which is the direct financing where we provide equity or debt to one project or one company. Also, we have an indirect approach where we provide line of finance to banks that will redirect this line of finance to the small and medium enterprise. But sometimes it's not enough because you may have some SMEs that cannot be eligible for the direct approach because we have a minimum size and also that may need more than the line of finance. So we do also create financial institution within our member country. This is to get a multiplying impact, to make sure that if you are present locally, you can also deploy capital locally and then having a better reach of all their SMEs. So the challenges of doing business in Africa are many and bureaucracy is at the top of the list. The biggest challenge is getting the word out that there, in fact there is a new model for economic freedom. Getting the word out that uh, there, there, there's a, a fresh sort of capital that could be deployed on a long-term patient basis that could be more accretive than short-term capital. When the word is out, it resonates incredibly powerfully with companies that we're uh, uh, talking to. Uh, processing the deal flow is another important component for us. Uh, once we find these companies, there's so many opportunities in which to deploy, but we're trying and are being very disciplined and rigorous as we evaluate the right fit. Uh, Said often by many, but holding true, is the issue of empowering women to grow economies and improve lifestyles. It's happened that um, the about 30% uh, of SMEs in Africa are developed, are for, led by African women. And if you consider that this 30% of the total SME, SME are uh, held by 10% of women, 
So you can see the potential of increase. If we empower women in economic sense, they can have more uh, SMEs and uh, will be more participating in the development process. But it is not just a matter of financing. There are other potential benefits accrued from these joint ventures. For us, it's an opportunity to, to get in direct contact with uh, not only uh, government representatives, but also uh, business people and uh, financial institutions from the region. Uh, because uh, uh, we have only very recently started um, uh, working directly in Africa. Corruption has proven to be a huge challenge for many investors. So how do they deal with it? We have a, a, a mandate from our government that is very specific. Uh, we are to encourage Brazilian presence in Africa only when it is clear to us that um, this presence is welcome on the part and is in accordance with the priorities of the country, the host country. Um, so we, uh, as a public um, um, organism, as a public bank, we, we have to be very mindful of the uh, local authorities, the local government priorities, and that's what we try to set up. Financial sector analysts claim that this is the century for Africa, and this is the time for her to achieve her potential. But is everything necessary really in place for this to happen? I come from a country that has been for decades dubbed the country of the future. Mm -hmm. um, it gets old. So it's important to put in place the concrete structures that are needed for real development to be achieved. Mm -hmm. Basically, you cannot develop a country without infrastructure. You need water and sewage, you need transportation, you need energy, more than everything else, and you need telecommunications. So infrastructure, not to mention ports and, and harbors and airports, but uh, this is key, uh, and this is something that has to be in place, uh, is, is where productivity comes from. Uh, and the second um, structural uh, need for development is the people. You have to have social inclusion. Brazil has done a, a great effort. We still have to do a lot more. But we have brought um, uh, people who are above the poverty line. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we, we had under the poverty line, we had some, uh, around 37% of the population 10 years ago. Now it's around 8% of the population. Um, it's still a lot. Uh, but unless you do that, you do not generate the social and economic conditions for development. Now we have an internal market, people who are able to take part in a market econ an economy as consumers. Um, so um, people can talk a lot about uh, compet competi competitivity and productivity and all sorts of technical indicators, but those two structural items, if they are absent, the future will be always you know, one step ahead of you. Different companies and organizations attend the conference for a myriad of reasons, including trying to share the realities on the ground to clear the misrepresentations and hearsay. In the last decade, the interest in Africa as an investment destination has grown, begging the question, why now? Yes, as I said again, uh, ability to communicate. Today, you take your handy and uh, put a, a, a tweeting and find something. You know, in fact, we are talking to the whole world. So Africa is globally exposed now for people to know and to hear. So I think that was the reason. Well, I think for Germany, uh, Africa is still uh, quite an unknown continent. And I think as there are really, as there is a growing potential for investment in, in this continent, it's very interesting uh, to, know, le to learn more, to meet people, uh, and to learn more, yes, about, um, about the opportunities that this continent uh, presents to them. So, so it's, it's very interesting to bring the two sides together.
The conference has brought together at least 30 countries and organizers hope the figure will continue to grow as Africa becomes the continent of opportunity and hope. We are also in the Cotton Conference because we as DG we are believe very much in the strength and opportunities of the African continent. But uh, having said that, we still know that uh, in Europe and especially also in, in Germany, business uh, people uh, still perceive Africa as a continent of risk. And uh, this is why we have decided to, use, uh, <coughs> to host the conference in order to use also the conference to portray, to change a little bit the, the perception of Africa in a more positive way. And at the same time also to allow more business to business contacts because I think uh, entrepreneurs from Africa are the best ambassadors. Participants at the AFIF conference included financial institutions, NGOs, entrepreneurs and project developers, trade associations and research institutions, among others. Conferences such as this one are held all the time and for so many people, the question is, what are the benefits? It has all been said before, but what prevent a priest or uh, an imam to be saying the same truth, the same appeal to the people. It will reinforce their understanding of uh, uh, their belief. And for us, the belief here is that to reinforce by saying so, to invite more people, incremental step, in order to uh, achieve to our goal. If you have more m meetings like this one that is really aimed and targeted to the business meetings, I always say that learning is, is very, very important, obviously. Education is extremely important. Sharing experiences is very important. But tomorrow you leave the conference and you, you need to have something in hand. And I would love that you have in hand also a, a business, a business plan, an investment plan, a partner that you discuss as interested in your project. So I really want to see that things are invested in, in, in Africa, that uh, projects are developed in Africa, that ideas are, are, are <clears throat> nurtured in such a way that you can identify your, your good partner. And this is why the B2B sessions are so important to us and we worked so hard to make sure that you really, at the end of the day, you had 10 meetings and out of them, at least two are profitable. Well, I hope you have learned something from what has been said. As Africa's investment opportunities continue to grow, it is the hope that meetings such as AFIF will foster this growth and that partnerships will benefit not just the investors, but also locals working in the small and medium sector. The next conference will be held in Africa, in Kinshasa, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thank you.